Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have a second example of a nonlinear situation where we have three charges and we're trying to find the force on one of the charge due to the presence of the other two. In this case, we're trying to find the force on Q1. To do that again, you better start out by drawing the vectors that indicate the forces in each case of the presence of the other, of the, of the other charges. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, first of all, the, the force between Q2 and Q1, that's a force of repulsion, so there's a force pointing in this direction on Q1. That would be the force between charge 1 and 2. And then there's a force of attraction between Q1 and Q3 because it's negatively charged, so that force will be pointing in this direction. So this is equal to F between 1 and 3. Of course, it's a vector quantity. And you can see then, when you want to find the resultant, you have to add those together. And this is what the resultant will look like. So this will be F total on Q1. And that is what we're trying to find. To do that, we first want to find the magnitude of the two vectors, 1, 2, and 1, 3. Now, notice they are not equal because the values of the charges are different. If the values of the charges would be the same, even though they're positive and negative charges, they would be the same, but in this case, they are not. There's different charges there. So let's start with fours between 1 and 2. That's equal to k times q1, q2 divided by the distance squared. Now again, if it's positive or negative charges, we don't really care because we only want to find the magnitude of the force. That's equal to 9 times 10 to the 9 newtons times Q1 is 2 microcoulombs. That's 2 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. And, uh, well, actually, I'm not going to write coulombs. I'm going to leave off the units except for newtons just to make it cleaner. And then Q2 is uh, 7 microcoulombs. So that's 7 times 10 to the minus 6 all divided by the distance between them. Notice it's an equilateral triangle. The distance is 0.3 meters, so it's 0 0.3 quantity squared. So what is the magnitude of that? 9e to the 9th times 2e to the 6 minus times 7e to the 6 minus divided by 0.3 squared. And that's going to be, huh, looks like, 14 or 1.4. I think it looks like 1.4. I'm having trouble seeing those little dots on my calculator as my eyes are not as good as they used to be. All right, so let's say that's equal to 1.4 newtons. Let's quickly see order magnitude. So that's 9, that's 18, that's uh, 14, that's 20, divided by 9.09. .09. That would be 100. That's 10 to 11. 10 to 11. That's minus 12, 14, 1.4. Oh, that looks good. All right, next. Uh, let's see here. The four is between one and three. That's K, Q1, Q3, divided by R squared. So we have nine times 10 to the nine Newtons times Q1, which is two times 10 to the minus six Coulombs. Q3 is a negative 4, but we don't care about the negative because we only want to find the magnitude, all divided by, again, that would be 0 0.3 squared. And so what we have to do is divide by 7, multiply times 4, divide by 7 times 4 equals, and that would be 0 0.8 newtons for the magnitude of that force because obviously since this has a smaller magnitude, it's going to have a smaller effect on the on Q2 or Q1. Now that we have the magnitudes, now we realize if we're going to add these together vectorially, we have a bit of a problem because F12 is not pointing either in the X or the Y direction, it's at an angle, so we have to find the X and Y components. So let's do that. So here, this will give us F12 in the X direction. And I'll put the X a little bit lower here. There we go. And then we have the component in the y direction, so this would be F12 in the y direction. Now we need the angle. 
Notice that these are opposite angles, so this angle right here is also 60 degrees. And then to find f12 x, f12 in the x direction is equal to f12 times the cosine of 60 degrees, which is 1 half. And so we have this is equal to 0 0.5 f12. And f12 is 1.4 newtons, so this is 0 0.5 times 1.4 newtons which is 0.7 Newton. So that gives us the magnitude of the x component of that force. Now we find the magnitude of the y component. F12 in the y direction is equal to F12 times the sine of 60 degrees, which is equal to 0.866 F12, which is equal to 0.866 times 1.4, and for that, I will need a calculator. So 0.866 times 1.4 is 1.2. Well, we'll just round it off to 1.2 newtons. There we go. All right. So now that we have the two components of F12 and we have F13, which points in the x direction, we're now ready to add the vectors. All right. The F on Q1 is equal to. So now we're going to add the X components and we're going to add the Y components together. So first the X components and there's two of them. We have F13 and it's pointing in the X direction so that's a positive minus F12 in the X direction and that would be in the X direction and let's see, the y direction, that's going to be minus, because it's pointing downward, f12 in the y direction times y hat. Let's plug in those values. So this is equal to f13, that's right here, 0.8 newtons, minus f12 in the x direction, which is 0.7 newtons. That's in the x direction minus F12 in the y direction, which is 1.2 newtons. So this becomes equal to 0 0.1 newton in the x direction, minus 1.2 newtons in the y direction. So this is the resultant force on Q1 due to the presence of Q2 and Q3. But what if we want to find the magnitude and direction format of this result. So now we want to find the magnitude of FQ1, which is equal to the square root of FQ1 in the x direction squared plus FQ1 in the y direction squared, which is equal to the square root of 0 0.1 newton squared plus a negative 1.2 newtons squared. Actually, we don't have to have the negative sign there because we just really care about the magnitudes. And this is equal to, so I kept the 1.2124 in my calculator so I don't have rounding errors. So let's square that, plus 0.1 squared equals, take the square root, that gives us 1.22, I'll just round it off. I'll just write this 1.22, 1.22 newtons. So this here is the magnitude of the resultant force. And now, what about the direction? To find the direction, let's find this angle right here. Let's call this angle phi. I'm going to find the angle with relative to the positive x-axis. And phi is equal to the inverse tangent of the opposite side of the angle divided by the adjacent side of the angle, which is equal to the inverse tangent of the opposite side of the angle well, that's going to be the y component of the resultant. So that's going to be, uh, let's see here, that would be fq1 in the y direction divided by the adjacent is going to be the resultant uh, in the x direction. So that's going to be fq1 in the x direction, which is equal to the inverse tangent of the y direction component is going to be 1.2 divided by the x, which is 0 0.1, and that will give us an angle of 12 
take the inverse tangent, and that gives us about 85 degrees. So that shows us that the final result has a magnitude of 1.22 newtons and makes an angle of 85 degrees relative to the positive x-axis. That means you can have your answer in terms of the vector quantities, x and y directions, or in terms of magnitude and direction relative to the positive x-axis. That's how it's done.